How's it going everyone? David from DOD Media. Today I want to show you how I use warp stabilizer because quite often you can end up having footage that is just a little bit too shaky to just run by itself and you want to have a little bit of stability in there just to kind of just to even it out a little bit. And you might be shooting handheld like this or you might be on a gimbal but either way knowing how to use warp stabilizer because the default settings are crap uh, knowing how to use it better well that'll help you just get a little bit more out of your footage. So let's fire up Premiere Pro or After Effects and I'll show you how I use Warp Stabilizer. Alright, so I've got three clips loaded up in Premiere Pro and if you're doing this in After Effects it's exactly the same process, it's just that it's a little bit easier to scrub through it and edit it in Premiere Pro. Uh, but the effect is identical. Warp Stabilizer is identical in both programs, it uses the same plugin. So the first clip I have, I'll show you here, it's a little bit shaky, it's handheld and there's a little bit of lateral movement, which you're going to see is going to affect the background. The second clip is a lot more shaky and this one, I mean, this is forced. This is really kind of, you know, a, a fake shake. Uh, but I just wanted to really kind of push it to its limit of what it can actually fix and resolve. And then the last one is just a slow tracking in shot, which obviously handheld has a lot of movement like that. So your subject's kind of moving around like that, but the background's not moving as much. And basically these three examples are going to show you the limitations that Warp Stabilizer has and also how the different settings based on the default settings versus the settings that I'm going to show you will affect that image and will affect it differently and will increase or decrease the jello effect, the wobble, the warp, everything like that. So let's just go ahead and apply warp stabilizer to the very first one. So you go to your effects panel and you type in warp and I'll find warp stabilizer right there and apply that to it. It'll analyze it in the background and it'll turn its way through those clips either very fast if you have a fast machine or very slowly if you have a slow machine. All right, and now it has stabilized my clip. But these are the default settings and I don't think they're great. So let's have a look through and see what it does. All right, so it's stabilized on the camera nicely, but you can see the background there is just wobbling quite a bit and it feels like it's almost forced stability. Force, for, forced stability. So if you come up to your effects controls panel and scroll down to where it says warp stabilizer, there you can turn your effect on and off. You can see how much it's cropping in there to have to stabilize it. So let's go ahead and drop that smoothness down to 5%. It'll re-stabilize it. It doesn't have to read through all of the frames again because it's already got that data that it needs, but it'll just reprocess that stability. Process, process, process. Okay, and now let's look through it. And you can see the movement that I had in there, that handheld movement, it's still there. You've still got that kind of swaying of it. It's just that it's really smoothed out. It's not fixing onto the camera quite as rigidly, quite as, as synthetically as it was before, which means that it's allowed to move around. And as a result, the background has far less actual jiggle distortion and warping but it still looks nice and stable. It looks like it's smooth. It doesn't look like it's jittery handheld, which to me is sort of the purpose of Warp Stabilizer. All right, so then let's try it on the second clip. Again, very shaky clip. Let's go back to the beginning, apply Warp Stabilizer, let it turn through the frames, nice and quick. All right, and now let's see what it's done for us by default. I mean, look at that background. It's like it's dancing on jelly. So the camera, nice and stable, looks great. The background looks terrible. So again, drop it down 5%. And now let's see. Still kind of looks like jelly, but it's not, it's not quite as bad because it's keeping some of that movement in there. So if you're not happy with it and it's still just jiggling a little bit too much for your liking, what you can do is come along and drop down that advanced tab. Now in the advanced tab, you can do a detailed analysis and that will reanalyze the clips, reanalyze every single frame in the clip and pay a little bit more attention to what's going on so that it doesn't add as much jiggle, as much, you know, crap in the background of your shot. And if you play this through now, you can see that there's a little bit of jiggle still in there, but it's maintaining that natural camera movement a lot better than it was before the detailed analysis. And certainly if you play this back, 
and then just remove that warp stabilizer effect, the difference is crazy. And then let's do the tracking shot, apply warp stabilizer to that, it'll analyze the frames. Okay, and now by default, gives us a little bit of a weird warping in the background there. Nice and stable on the camera, but everything else kind of sucks. So again, let's drop that down to 5% smoothness and see how that looks. So you can see the camera is kind of swaying a lot more like that, which isn't ideal. So here maybe you might want a little bit more than 5% if you're really trying to focus it, pin it into that camera so that it doesn't move, so that it looks like it is stabilized, tracked to that camera. You could go for maybe 25%. That's better. You can still see that it's it's kind of wobbling in the background. So let's try an advanced detailed analysis again. That's looking better. It's a little bit smoother. It's not great, but then the original shot was crap. So you can't polish a turd as they say. Do they say that? Do they still say that? I think they still say that. I'm older than I look. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So just really quick recap. Um, instead of going for the default setting of 50%, drop it down to 5%. If you need to then go into your advanced settings and go for a detailed analysis, and that will reanalyze the clips with a little bit more um, detail. And then what I'd suggest you do if you wanna save a little bit of time, once you have that set up like that, just right click Warp Stabilizer save preset and save that as a preset that you can just drag and drop straight onto your clips instead of having to go through change the smoothness advanced detailed analysis tick that box all of that just save it as a preset the only thing that can sometimes happen when you save warp stabilizer as a preset is that you still have to go through and press analyze that it won't analyze it by default like automatically like it does when you just apply the blanket effect but there you go i hope this was helpful um, a lot of people have no idea what they're doing when they're putting warp stabilizer on there and their footage ends up looking like this kind of bouncy castle wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man thing and um it's just a shame because it kind of ruins your footage um so by tweaking it a little bit you can save it not save it but maybe i don't know anyway let me know what you thought in the comments. Give it a thumbs up if you liked what you saw and hit that subscribe button to get more videos from me at DoD Media. It's tutorials like these, it's gear reviews over there. And uh, yeah, it's fun. Oh, mail's here. Look at that.